Right, so we're here at Partridge Lakes today and we're doing a bit of pellet fishing. We're just coming into the spring now and that's probably one of the key tactics of this time of year when you come into State Lakes is this sort of soft pellet fishing. Now, one of the most important things when you're doing this sort of style of fishing is getting the feeding right because not enough bait and you're not attracting enough fish into your peg to get bites. But too much bait, you're leaving too much bait on the bottom and you start to foul up fish and you can kill your peg. So having the right pole pops is really, really important. I've got a little selection here of actually seven different sort of types of pops that I do use um, when I'm doing this sort of fishing. So the first sort of style of feeding you can do with soft pellets is what we call sprinkling. So that's where we're going to be tapping the bait in and them coming out in sort of loose pellets. And the advantage of that is they're going to make noise as they hit the water. And it's going to be creating a bigger column of bait which is going to draw fish into your peg. So starting with the first one, which is probably the one I always start on at the start of the session just to try and go in and get a bite. And that's this small Guru cab pot, which has just got a standard sprinkle lid on. Now, what this allows you to do is put sort of a pinch of micro pellets in and it probably takes, I don't know, can't be much more than sort of 60 micro pellets. It's not loads and loads of bait. And generally I try and spread that out over two or three feeds. So you're probably feeding sort of 20 to 30 micros at a time. And at the start of the session, you tend to just go in on this pot, sprinkle a little bit of bait out and just try and fish for a bite. And often, you know, on days where it's a little bit trickier, that's the pot you stay on all day. Now, when this becomes a problem is when you're sprinkling bait out and the bait's coming out quite slow, you tend to create, like I was talking about, a bigger column of bait where you've got some micro pellets falling, some falling behind it. And if there's a few fish starts coming in your peg, you start to get liners and, you know, the fish are sitting off the bottom in your peg and you have to change the way you introduce your bait. Now, another little option is I've got the same little pot again, identical, other than I've cut the holes open, basically got a little triangle in the pot. And what that allows me to do is just introduce my bait in the same sort of way, but just faster. So when I put them micro pellets in, instead of them sprinkling out real, very slow, they tend to just come out really quick and I can feed them much faster. Now, that works really, really well when you start to get a few liners, the fish are coming up off the bottom and you just want to introduce your bait a bit quicker. So just having a pot where you've cut the holes out a little bit more can work really, really well. So that's them two pots. Now, I, I also do with micro pellets, use this bigger medium guru with the sprinkle lid. Now I tend to use this pot more when I'm fishing a couple of lines. So say for example, I'm going to be fishing across and down the edge and I want to keep both of them lines fed. What I can do, is I can fill this one right up. It probably takes double the amount of bait as that little pot. And I can go out, say if I'm fishing down the edge, I can go out to me across line quick, sprinkle half of them pellets in, and then I've still got enough bait in my pot then to go and fish me other lines. So if you're fishing a couple of lines, sometimes this pot can be very good as well. Um, also sometimes on days where I'm wanting to feed a little bit more bait, generally when I want to fish a little, feed a little bit more bait, I'll be moving over to my clump pots which I'm going to talk through next so that's the sprinkle pots generally this is the best way at this time of year just as we're first coming through into the um, spring but obviously again when, when it warms up we'll be moving on to these clumping in pots. Channel memberships we've got loads of exclusive content for you guys to enjoy now for just $4.99 a month you get four videos with at least one live match sometimes two on top of that you get an exclusive members only live stream with myself and a star angler so so far I've had Lee Kerry, James Dent, Christian Jones, just to name a few. Loads of great top content. Plus, if you want to pay $7.99 a month, you can get our Catch More Media Elite package, which gets you all the edited content you just mentioned yes. a whole week earlier than everybody else. Even the stuff that goes on the main channel, folks, you'll get it a week earlier. So if you want the real edge over your mates, you want to know the killer edges from the stars before everybody else, that is the package to go for. Get in there first. Go and check it out. You will not regret it. See you over there. First clumping in pot that I've got, again we've got the small guru. This one's the one with the holes in the side and what that allows is for the bait to flush out quite easy. So when you touch it on the water, the bait's just going to flush into the holes in the pot, push them that bit of bait out. So this pot is again like 
the beginning of me clumping in pots. So when the fishing gets good and there's a lot of fish rushing into your peg and all that sprinkling is doing is bringing fish up off the bottom and giving you liners, then this pot, by filling that up and feeding it in a clump, I'll just be able to dunk it all in, create a nice little pile, which hopefully should bomb straight down to the bottom. And I've got that little trap set for a fish and I can just sit and be patient and wait for a bite. So again, just as we're starting to warm up a little bit more, you might need to you know, clump your bait in. So that's a small guru. And the next step up is this medium guru in the range. But I actually think sometimes that is too much of a jump up. So this pot is about half of what this pot is. So this medium pot tastes, like I say, about double what the small pot takes. But there's an odd occasion where you just tend to find if you feed one of them every chuck, you tend to overcook your peg and you start foul looking fish or you start getting a few indications but they won't pick your hook bait up because you fed a little bit too much bait. So that's where this pot, which is a cut down medium pot, comes into it. Now, if you have a look, I've not took a lot off that. I've just cut it down to, so like there's a little bit of that gray rim still showing on the pot. Now that's very important as it keeps the pot rigid. If you cut the grey rim off, you, your pot tends to just sort of collapse in on itself and it doesn't seem to work very well. So make sure you leave that little bit of grey pot on. And basically now by having that little range, I've got three pots for clumping in. And I'd say the small pot takes sort of, like I say, half what the medium pot takes and then this cut down medium somewhere in between. And to be honest, most of the time in the summer, when you're catching a lot of F1s, this cut down medium pot just seems to be the one. You feed one of them every time, it just seems to be the perfect amount of bait where, like I say, you're not putting too much bait into your peg, but you're feeding enough to drag enough fish into your peg to be able to catch them. So I think that's really, really important that you do create yourself that little cut down medium pot. Um, I know a lot of people might say, why not just sort of three quarters fill your medium pot, but I don't like doing that because I know you can easily, when you start catching, just feed it a little bit too much and you just kill your peg. So by having the right size of pot and having a few different pots, you can just make sure you're controlled in your feeding. I think when you're fishing for F1s, which can be really, really cute at times, that's really, really important. Now, there is one more pot that I want to talk about that I do use for micro pellets every now and again. Now. When you go into venues like Monk Hall, um, sometimes Westwood Lakes, where you're fishing for lots and lots of fish, or there's a few bigger carp mixed in as well. So like at Monk Hall, say you're on the Hawk Pool or Buzzard, or you go to Westwood, you're on Skylark, and you're fishing for them bigger stamp carp, then often feeding a large guru full of micro pellets can really, really work. Now, that is a lot, a lot of bait with micro pellets. Like if I fill that up, you'll see that's quite a lot of individual micro pellets to be feeding every chuck but when you're fishing for them bigger stamp carp on these sort of snake lake venues that can also be very very important to have that pot but generally when i use this pot is when i'm going to be stepping up to bigger hook baits over the top so i'd probably not be fishing that in conjunction with an expander i'd be putting sort of like a bigger target hook bait on so a piece of corn a worm maybe piece of meat at some venues just something that stands out a little bit more when you're having to feed this much bait but it's also a pot that i wanted to touch on because it is a pot that you will start to use in the summer for micro pellets so as you can see there's like i say there's seven different options there in the pots it looks very excessive but it just allows you to get ultimate control over what you're feeding which when you're doing this sort of fishing you're fishing for f1 i think that's one of the most important things is having that control where you can go in and feed the same way every time and get a consistent sort of, you know, like a routine in what you're doing and then you can just keep repeating the process. And when you're fishing for lots and lots of fish, lots of F1s, I think that's very, very important. 